This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. It is the cheapest PCB manufacturer and it is the company that I use for the majority of my projects. The PCB quality is excellent and they have professional support staff. You can upload your PCB design as Gerber files. Then you choose the quantity, the color, and you can add stencil if you want. Most likely, your first order is very cheap within $5 but you have to check the shipping cost to your country. Hi, lithium batteries are among the most popular batteries that we use every day. We find them used in most of the devices around us, starting from mobile phones up to electric cars. Of course, the sizes, the shapes of these batteries are variable. But in this video, I will focus on the available batteries of the size 18650, which means that their diameter is 18 mm and their length is 65 mm. These batteries are lithium batteries, but do they all use the same chemicals? The answer is no. According to this table, there are many components that are included in the structure of these lithium batteries. And each one has its own characteristics, advantages and disadvantages. For example, there are batteries that contain cobalt, especially cobalt oxide, and are called LCO and others contain iron and are known as LFP and others contain magnesium such as NMC and LMO and others that contain nickel and aluminium which are NCA and one that includes titanium which is the LTO and each one has different applications than others and by the way car companies use NCM and NCA batteries mainly because they can store more energy than others, although they are more dangerous. And Tesla in particular uses NCA batteries. By looking at all these technologies, you will find that all of them have a cell voltage of approximately 3.6 to 3.7 volt. And therefore, you can charge them with the same charger that will push the voltage up to 4.2 volt. Except one battery, which is the LFV battery because their voltage is approximately 3.2 or 3.3 volt and their voltage when it's fully charged is a 3.6 volt and therefore their charger should be different otherwise your battery might suffer from overheating or swelling the nice thing about LFB batteries which include iron is it's the safest lithium battery exists so far in the market but this is at the expense of the storage capacity if scientists could increase the storage capacity larger it would be the dominant one in the electric car market. It's important to note that some battery manufacturers in the market give codes for the batteries they manufacture. And these codes don't necessarily indicate the type of chemicals. For example, Samsung manufactures batteries and gives them the code of INR18650-25R. And these batteries are NCA batteries. And also they manufacture a battery called ICR18650 dash 26J which is an NMC battery according to this page but some may interpret the name as an LCO battery so it's a good to do a good research on the material included in the battery structure to classify it correctly and you can approach the manufacturers to ask them about what type is that battery there are batteries from Panasonic called NCR18650B and they are NCA batteries, but with a protection circuit that's been added to the cell. And therefore, their length is a little bit longer than usual. And almost the same batteries are available on RS Online website. But for LFV batteries, they are the easiest batteries to distinguish. Because they are the only ones whose voltage is lower than normal, which is about 3.2 volt. Through my development of a circuit that works on lithium batteries, I've chosen the LFB batteries because they are the safest, but other batteries are cheaper and popular. So if I want to use lithium batteries in general, I have to make a charger, but it should accept all types. Through research, I found many integrated circuits that charge batteries, but they charge only the lithium batteries that accepts 3.6 to 4.2 as a volt. And this is not desirable for me. So I researched a little bit more and finally I found one which is the BQ25170 which from the datasheet it says 
it can actually charge both of them, but you have to tell the chip which battery is on the board. And this by choosing the value of the resistor that's populated on the pin V set. For example, if the resistance is 82 kilo ohm, the chip will know that it is an FB battery and sets the charging voltage to 3.6 volt as a maximum. And if you put a resistance of 27 kilo ohms, it will set the value of the voltage up to 4.2 volt. And now in order to use this IC, I read the datasheet to know other things related to its operation and function. For example, by changing this resistance on the IC terminal, I can change the maximum charging current according to this equation. And here I have chosen a resistance value of 430 ohms, which gives a maximum current of 697 milliamp. And then I have designed this circuit. I have bought a switch to change the values of the resistor that's connected to VSET and this will determine the type of the battery based on the voltage that I'm setting. And I have added a circuit that can stop charging if the temperature is too high. And then I have added some LEDs that indicate the charging status. And here is the shape of the circuit after finalizing the design. And then I ordered my PCBs from JLC PCB. And this is how it's arrived. It is well packaged and all pieces arrived in good conditions, high quality as expected. Then I start collecting all the components needed for the PCB. And most of them are surface mount components, apart from maybe a few, which is connectors, thermal resistors and switches. I use the stencil, which I ordered as well with a board. And by adding some solder paste, the PCB now is ready to accept all the components on board. And then I used my small heater to make the process easier for me. For the battery holders, I have two options. The first is a regular battery holder as shown, and it is more expensive. And the problem with it is, it doesn't fit all sizes of batteries, protected or unprotected batteries. So I have to look at another solution. So the solution was to use these battery caps, which will give you the ability to control the distance between these battery caps during soldering that will be enable you to fit all the batteries. And this is what I used in my design. And this is how I soldered all the components and soldered also the thermistor and the switch that will change the battery type and then will set the voltage. And this is the final result. The first lid on the left here tells if you have a good value for the power supply connected to this board. And here I have chosen to put five volt on it as it's better not to exceed the 6.6 .6 volt as the datasheet said. I started supplying power to my board and now the two LEDs start blinking that indicates that there is no battery is populated yet. I'm here, I'm putting the Samsung battery and now the LEDs are indicating it is charging. The initial current was within the current specified by the resistance on the terminal I set which is slightly less than the 700 milliampere. It will keep charging until it approaches 4.2 volt and the current starts to decrease and then it stops charging and then the charging LED will turn off, that indicates it is completed. Then I took off the Samsung battery and replaced it with LFB battery, but I have to change the switch to LFB before that. Then I put the battery and it actually started charging in the same order as before. Batteries of all types can be placed and charged without problems with this circuit. This is an opportunity for you to create a comprehensive charging circuit for example, by using microcontrollers if you can't get one of these chips. I tried now to put a lithium battery, but with a smaller and different size, and it's not cylindrical as usual, and I connected it to the output via this connector, and as expected, it started charging without any problem. This circuit will be part of a larger circuit, but I like to test any new chips I use separately. If you like to know more about power electrons and circuit, please consider looking at my course on Udemy, which is Basics of Power Electronics. It teaches you how to use AltiSpice and simulate different DC to DC converters and consider also the thermal dissipation and design of different converters. And also, it introduces you to silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride switches. And if you like to know more, please consider looking at the links in the description below. I hope you find this video enjoyable. So if you do like, share and subscribe, please. And see you in the next video. Thank you.